Hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar, developer of the Integrative Movement System and author of the Corrective Exercise Solutions to Common Hip and Shoulder Dysfunction. Welcome to video two of this Integrative Movement Insider Corrective Exercise Strategy Series of looking at the foot function and improving foot function in your general population clients. Recall from video one, we discussed the idea or this concept of foot pronation or ankle and foot pronation. Remember that we said that ankle and foot pronation is a normal biomechanic occurrence of the ankle and foot complex. Essentially, it's the tibia moving over top the talus, so that's the dorsiflexion component of it. The foot will evert, or that hind foot, the calcaneus will evert, the midfoot and forefoot will evert also to lower the arches to get that foot down to the ground. And then the foot will also abduct. The toes will spread out, move away from midline of the foot, and the foot will relatively abduct away from the midline of the body. And these three planes of motion allow the foot to adapt to the ground and really help us absorb shock. It's not a primary shock absorber, but it's part of the shock absorption system of our body. Now we discussed the idea of overpronation, and that's where, generally speaking, the client will have the navicular bone or that medial arch of the foot dropping down too much to the ground. And even in these individuals, many of these individuals with overpronation of the medial arch of their foot, they will often have a component of the foot that's too rigid. One of these muscles, a common muscle to be stiff and short, is the posterior tibialis. The posterior tibialis comes from the back side of the tibia and the interosseous membrane between the tibia and the fibula, and it wraps down around the medial side of the ankle and inserts into many of the bones, almost every bone of the foot. What it does is it will help to invert the foot, the plantar flexor foot, but when it doesn't release or when it's too stiff, it won't allow that midfoot to drop down to the ground as it should, and that's where some of these overcompensations of the medial arch will come from. So I'm going to show you a release we do with our clients and how we teach our clients to go home and do this release. It's super effective at getting better function because what we want to do then is teach our clients how to control that foot tripod or that pressure underneath the big toe, small toe, and heel. So first we have to release that posterior tibialis in these clients. So here's how we do that. So generally speaking, we'll take a trigger point ball. So this is a trigger point therapy ball for my friends and colleagues over there at Trigger Point Therapy. But again, you can use whatever. You can use a stiff racket ball, or you can use a soft ball, whatever tool you have at your disposal. We like the trigger point ball because it just it's easier and it's, it allows to get in between the gastric and the soleus without creating too much discomfort. So what you're going to do is put the ball up on a surface, so like a coffee table or edge of a chair, because you have to get through the gas wrap and soleus, and that's oftentimes hard to do. So I'm going to put my affected leg, or the leg I'm working on, on top of the ball like this. And then I'm going to lie back, and then cross my other leg on top of that leg. And what I'm going to do is release my pressure just a little tiny bit, and then point my toes like that, so plantar flex my foot here, and then I'm going to release the plantar flexion, pull the toes up, and then drop the ball, or drop, put the weight down through the ball. So now I can sink down deeper into the muscle bellies between the gastric and soleus, so I get as close as I can to the posterior tibialis. So again, I'm gonna plantar flex, and then pull the toes back up, and push down to get back through the gastric and soleus, and into the posterior tibialis muscle belly. Okay. And I can move the ball down slightly, so if there's different areas you can find that will be hypertonic. And you're also releasing the gastric and soleus at the same time as well. So again, you are getting gastric and soleus release at the same time. So that's pretty effective as well. So again, I'm going to plantar flex and hold for about five seconds, and then dorsiflex, and then push down with this leg here, my right leg, push down to get the ball just a little bit deeper into that muscle belly. Okay. Once I've done that a few times, now I'm going to release the attachments underneath the arch of the foot. So to, to, to do that, we're going to use this Yamada device. We like this because it's like, it's like a half dome. You can also take a ball, use a ball if you have that as well. We like this because it doesn't roll, but again, you can use whatever device at your disposal. You can use one of these dowel sticks as well. They all work well. So you put the Yamada down. And what you're going to do is put it in the arch of your foot 
and then slowly put the pressure down. So I try to line up my foot as best I can with my knee, with my hip, and then put pressure down. And again, just hold it for a count of 10, and I'm trying to spread the foot out, because remember, we ultimately want the foot to be able to pronate or spread out those toes to abduct away from the midline of the foot. So this is a great way to retrain that aspect of it as you're doing your release. Once you've done one area, you can move the Yamada device or your ball slightly higher up. Same thing, don't cause too much discomfort. It should be, just be slight discomfort for your clients and just a little bit of pressure. Again, just putting, leaning forward, keeping the foot spread out, trying to keep the foot, knee, and hip aligned. I'll turn to the front here because now as we release underneath more towards the metatarsal heads and around the toes, I'm also gonna wrap the toes around the ball. So I wanna get the toes wrapping around the device and spreading out through that midfoot and forefoot. So I wanna spread that way through my foot. There you go. And I'm gonna lean forward just a little bit into dorsal flexion to put a little more pressure and I can get stretched through the top of my foot. So it's really a great way, again, that rigid, stiff foot that so many of our clients, especially our older clients, tend to have. And then release. So I can pull the toes up, do an active contraction and shortening of the extensors, and then release and lengthen around the device. And I can even give myself a little bit extra stretch here to pull those toes a little bit wider. And I still want to maintain that foot, knee, hip, and as much alignment as you can get. So you, as you're releasing, you're releasing into the position that you ultimately want your client to get into. So you take a couple different spots, release, hold the contraction, release, and you hold it for five to 10 seconds depending on the area, and then you do it three to five times depending on how stiff your client's foot is. So now we've got the muscle belly released of posterior tibialis along with some gastrocnemius. We've got the attachments underneath the foot to be released, and now the foot should be much more adaptable to the ground. So here's the next piece of our corrective exercise strategy, is now to use that foot tripod to get the pressure underneath that first metatarsal and toe, the second, or the, say, the fifth metatarsal, so digit number one, digit number five, get the toes to spread out, and underneath the heel. So we want the foot to be able to do this on the ground and still maintain that foot tripod connection, meaning the most pressure underneath the big toe, small toe, and heel. So I'm gonna stand up and do a squat. And what I want to do with my client is teach them where that foot tripod is, make sure the toes stay loose and released. We don't want them gripping the ground like that because that just pulls them back up into supination like you see me doing right there. So I want them to reach those toes long. I wanna make sure the toes stay loose. And as they squat down, they're gonna do a small squat. And I want them to think about the foot lengthening and spreading it. Spread it, lengthening so the toe should go slightly longer and the foot should slightly spread as well. So they just do a few squats, maintaining that foot tripod position, big toe, small toe, heel, letting the, the foot elongate and then come back up. The foot elongates and spreads out. Wiggle the toes, make sure they're not gripping into the floor and then come back out of that position. So that way your squat is reinforcing the optimal mechanics and alignment we want down at the foot. Very, very effective way to train that foot tripod and use that release we just used and start to activate those muscles that help hold the medial arch, the lateral arch, and that transverse arch of the foot. So I hope this video helped you understand pronation and then also how to use our release, activate, and in the next video, I'll show you really how to integrate this into some of our functional movement patterns we use with our own general population clients to improve foot function. This is Dr. Ivan Osar with Integrative Movement Insider. We'll catch you next time.